Okay, first of all, let me get one thing out of the way regarding the thumbnail. Yes, Zuko probably is the best redeemed villain of all time, and maybe also Darth Vader as well. But, personally, I also really like the story of Cedric as well, so please just let me have my cake and eat it too. And secondly, and arguably more importantly, I'm gonna need you to hear me out on this. Sophia the First is actually a pretty good show. I'm dead serious. It's far above the average of other kids' shows. In fact, I don't even really call it a kid show. I think that term is demeaning to anything that targets younger audiences and attempts to detract from the artistic effort and merits such projects hold. I don't see why a show like Bluey, for example, can be respected, but not Sophia the First. I smell bias. My point being, a good show is good regardless of the target audience, and a bad show is bad regardless of the target audience. I mean, it's not like all adult animated shows are good just because they're made for adults. I'm sure it's not that noticeable. Bald! 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 My eye! And thus, not all kids shows are bad because they are made with kids in mind. Okay, end of rant. I think one of the reasons why Sophia the First is such a solid show is because of its characters. Almost all of them are entertaining and relatable, with a lot of variety too. But none are better than a certain purple-robed sorcerer. Yes, that is why I am here today, to discuss a character who is not only the best character in this show, but one of the greatest characters I have ever seen in all of film and television history. Once again, I am dead serious. I genuinely have Cedric in my top 10 favorite characters of all time. He's just that good. But what actually makes Cedric so good? Well, first of all, he wears purple. Instant peak character. Secondly, he is absolutely hysterical. Like seriously, it's like he can't take two steps without stealing the whole show. But thirdly and most importantly, he is actually one of the best written characters in any TV show ever made. A tragic character who refuses to give up no matter what, despite his bad luck and fears of forever being a loser constantly driving him down the wrong path. But let me rewind back to point two for a moment first. You see, Cedric is a funny guy. Like, I'm not sure what else to say about it, he just is. See for yourself. But I promise never to take it off. And my mother says, a broken promise can never be glued back together. Hm? How irritatingly charming. But Mr. Cedric, wait! You're supposed to be teaching us magic. Yes, well, think of how magical it would be if you all sat there without making a pee. Oh, you've already done one bad thing today. What's one more? You cast that spell on purpose? She made me do it. You're even worse than that Cedric guy in Enchantia. I am that Cedric guy in Enchantia. Cheetah. Turn him back to normal. <laughs> Was he ever really normal to begin with? You know what she means, Flegel. <laughs> right, enough evil cackling. He is one of the most animated characters I have ever seen. His basic movements and mannerisms are filled with so much personality. In a way, he is like the heart of the show, at least the episodes he is in. And that's another thing I like about Cedric. The show doesn't overuse and rely on him. He is only put into an episode when he would make an entertaining addition, or if the episode is about him in the first place. And did I mention that he is voiced to perfection by Jess Harnell, who genuinely gives one of the best performances in voice acting history, in my opinion. What's wrong with me? What's wrong with you? <laughs> What's wrong with you? <laughs> I knew this day would come! <laughs> I mean, Oh, boo-hoo, you poor little thing. But now that all that is out of the way, we can talk about the real meat of Cedric's character, his story and development. Though before I can talk about early series Cedric, we first need to go way back, or should I say ahead, that being to an important episode in season four. Said episode, through the looking back glass, shows us what Cedric's life was like before he became like he is at the beginning of the show. As just a young boy, Cedric had a surprisingly great life. He was friends with the young King Roland, and was on good terms with his family. However, just one mistake was all it took for everyone to lose faith in him, as during an important event, Cedric is made a fool of when he messes up his sister in front of the entire kingdom. Tragically, none of this was even Cedric's fault, though no one realizes at the time, and even though you would think surely one mistake could be forgotten and forgiven, his family and friends instead choose to never let it go and mock him for all his life because of this one mistake. 
That horrible day has haunted me my whole life. Even his father lost all faith in him. They were too prideful to defend poor Cedric, because to them, he was an easy fall guy. After this event, no one in the kingdom could forget what happened, and they knew that. They didn't want to be associated with Cedric, so they pushed him away as a failure. Basically, what Buck Cluck did to Chicken Little in that movie. That's rough, buddy. As the years passed, it never mattered how good of a job Cedric did. It would never be good enough to anyone. They will always see him as a failure for all his life. And so, this is when Cedric vows to show the world his power. And the only way he knows how is to take over the kingdom with evil schemes and magic, since no one could ever see him as a great hero again after that big failure. But Cedric's idea of evil isn't quite the dictionary definition. It's more so that he sees evil as a way of life he was always destined to be a part of, since there is no chance of being a good sorcerer anymore. In reality, he isn't actually very evil. I mean, if he was, then he probably wouldn't be employed by the king. And speaking of that, Cedric managed to become a royal sorcerer of Enchantia mainly by lineage of being Goodwin the Great's son. Unfortunately for him, though, despite his ambitions, he is unable to make any real progress to take over the kingdom. And though he had an important role, Cedric was still forced to live as an outcast and a failure, spending most of his time in his tower alone. This caused him to grow more and more bitter about everything, making him into the signature pessimist we see at the start of the series. So right from his childhood, Cedric was a tragic character, believing he had to be a certain way because of society rejecting him for one error. The only thing that could cure his bitterness would be a true friend, but absolutely no one will give him a chance due to his reputation, leaving him alone for all his life. Well, at least until a certain title character shows up. Ah uh, yes, the good old first episode of Sophia the First. You know, the one where she joins the Flying Derby? Hey, wait a minute, this isn't the first episode. Seriously, Disney Plus, where is Once Upon a Princess? You know, the actual first episode? Well, anyways, in the pilot, we are properly introduced to Cedric and his goals and issues. We first see him messing up a spell, but he does quickly get it right. But the brief error is not impressive to King Roland, who obviously has a pretty low opinion of Cedric, stating that they are stuck with him, implying he would choose someone else if he could. Believe it or not, but this constant idea that Cedric is an idiot, and the already low opinion of him by everyone else, is very important for making his character logically fit into this world. Despite Sophia the First having many ongoing plot developments across its many episodes, it is still an episodic show with returning elements that pop up in several episodes, one of these being Cedric's attempts to steal the Amulet of Avalor. Cedric doesn't seem to care much about Sophia at first, but as soon as he sees the amulet that Roland gave her, he instantly recognizes it and thus starts off his journey. He believes that taking Sophia's amulet, which has magical powers, is exactly what he needs to take over the kingdom. And by taking over the kingdom, people will finally see that he isn't a failure. But as we'll see, he's not exactly very good at taking Sophia's amulet. And trust me, him not being very good at taking the amulet is very important because it shows us subtly that maybe this isn't what he was meant to do. But also remember that I said the low opinion of Cedric that most people in the castle share is actually very important. That is because they all just assume any of his schemes are just him fooling around and messing things up. They all think he is such an idiot that they don't even consider the idea that he could take over the kingdom or would even want to in the first place. It's actually a very genius way to allow him to have this entertaining, scheming, villainous personality while still being a part of the main hero's castle. But things get even more interesting for Cedric as soon as we get to the episode Cedric's Apprentice. This episode might just be the most important episode in the entire show for several reasons. Firstly, because it shows us that Cedric isn't actually some heartless monster. Not only is he willing to help Sophia with her test, even if it is, ultimately, to take her amulet when he is done, he enjoys himself while doing so. And Cedric finds himself surprised by how much Sophia sees in him, since she actually sees him as a good sorcerer, unlike the rest of the castle and pretty much the entire world, who all only see Cedric as a complete failure. He may not always be perfect, but Roland just assumes that Cedric is always doomed to mess things up no matter what. But Sophia sees for herself that this isn't the case, since in private, Cedric manages to do almost every spell perfectly. The reason why he actually messes up is because no one has faith in him. And because no one has faith in him, it causes him to lose faith in his own abilities. So therefore, the only reason he fails is because everyone keeps telling him that he will fail and expecting it to happen. And honestly, I can't tell you just how relatable of an issue that actually is in real life. The Enchanted Feast is another example of Cedric being misjudged by the world that I ought 
to mention. In this episode, Cedric doesn't actually do anything wrong, both in terms of his morals and spells, but the rest of the castle and even Clover see him as an idiot after his spells fail because of Miss Nettle's tricks. They all just assume that it went wrong because he did the spell wrong, not because someone else messed it up, which ties back to his origin story revealed in Through the Looking Back Glass, in which it was actually his own sister who messed up the spell, the one that caused everyone to think he was a failure in the first place. Most of the world is incapable of seeing past the occasional mistake and always assumes the problems are Cedric's fault. He says as much in his amazing villain song, Cedric the Great. Whenever things go wrong, King Roland simply stands in clay. It must be Cedric that's to blame. We can see in this song, too, that the main thing Cedric actually wants is respect and acknowledgement of his great abilities, something that he's spent most of his life trying to perfect, and yet everyone still thinks he's an idiot. And so he thinks the only way he'll ever get the title of great is by becoming the king, since everyone likes the king, and absolutely no one sees any worth in his magical abilities. Well, except for Sophia, of course, who is determined to help Cedric prove that he can be a great sorcerer and show it to the king. Sophia being so nice to Cedric creates a dilemma for him, which will continue throughout the rest of the show. That being, the only way to get what he wants, the Amulet of Avalor, is to betray the one and only person who actually supports and believes in him. Oh, and speaking of people who support Cedric, we also see Cedric's parents in this episode. Technically, Cedric's mom is also supportive of him, but that's just how she has always been. She isn't actually always there for him, only rare instances like this. So her support is not nearly as meaningful as the kind that Sophia is offering Cedric. His father, on the other hand, doesn't have any faith in him whatsoever, all because of that one mistake in the past, and he is stubborn that Cedric should do the right thing and not take over the kingdom. But ironically, this push by his father may in fact largely be responsible for Cedric wanting to take over the kingdom in the first place, since his father was one of the first people to lose faith in him, and so Cedric wanting to be villainous instead is likely a result of rejecting his father, and in conjunction, what he wants for him to do. After all, why would he want to be like the man who never believed in him? But in the end of this episode, Cedric does choose the good option anyway, because he just can't bring himself to betray the only person who has ever helped him and prove his magic abilities. Sophia's actions here are the nicest thing anyone has ever done for him. This is crucially important because it shows that Cedric is in fact capable of doing good and is willing to put people above his dreams sometimes. And in fact, even though he still desires the amulet, his relationship with Sophia only grows stronger as the show continues. But there is still an important question that ought to be answered. If all of Cedric's constant attempts to get the amulet always fail, then why does he keep trying to steal it regardless of the failed attempts? Well, the episode Substitute Cedric has an answer to that. In this episode, Cedric ends up becoming the substitute magic teacher at Royal Prep, but it turns out to be prank day for magic school Hexley Hall, and on his own, Cedric isn't enough to defeat these menaces. And so in order to aid his students in putting up a fight to save the school, he teaches them the most important lesson that his teacher taught him long Ago. I wanted to run and hide, but my teacher took me aside and said, The sorcerer's secret is never giving up the fight. You must keep trying till you finally get it right. As you can tell from what he says here, Cedric is one of the most determined and endurance-filled people on the planet, and his advice has carried him throughout his life. And it not only helps the students to solve their problem here, but it is the very same advice that causes him to never give up even though he often fails, which is why he still continues to go after the Amulet of Avalor, even though most of his schemes to get it keep failing. Oh, and trust me, Cedric has a lot of fails. In fact, there's probably enough to do a... <laughs> it's working. Soon, everyone in the ballroom will be asleep. <gasps> oh no! Epic Cedric fail montage. Merlin's mushroom. That's holding. Oh. 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 That's holding. Oh. I 
gigantic spurs, shrinky dinkles. Oh, my wand! Front doors speak clearly. They're all being quiet as Death, Mr. Cedric. Why? It's only a few bucks. <laughs> The fire, Wormy. No, Merlin's mushroom. Commander Salamander! Not if I have anything to say about it. The reversal! Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to retreat to my workshop to cry. Unfortunately for Cedric, his best efforts aren't good enough for everyone, no matter how hard he tries. And unfortunately, that includes his father, as mentioned before. But Cedric's father's most important appearance is actually in the episode Mystic Meadows, in which Cedric visits along with Sophia's Girl Scout group in hopes that he might be able to convince his father he is worthy of the family wand, something denied to him far longer than anyone else in his family. Well, you know, in reality, Cedric doesn't really have much hopes of actually getting the wand. In fact, he didn't really want to come in the first place, but it was Sophia who convinced him that he should give it a shot and try to get the wand, as that would allow her to get her good deed badge for her Girl Scout group. To Cedric's father, it doesn't matter how much great magic he does. He only remembers the failures and uses them as a never-ending excuse to not give Cedric the wand. And just like with King Roland and Miss Nettle before, the reason Cedric messes up his magic has nothing to do with his abilities, but other people messing him up. This time, it's his father overcorrecting him, taking on a high and mighty know-it-all attitude, acting like Cedric is a child who knows nothing. You were supposed to say pack and go, not Meltotto. You distracted me! Excuses, excuses. Since to Goodwin, he genuinely believes that Cedric is not a good sorcerer, and that if he doesn't constantly overcorrect him, that he will get everything wrong. Since that event where Cedric was embarrassed in front of everyone, embarrassed him by extension. And he's so afraid of being embarrassed again, that he doesn't ever want to let Cedric have the chance to do anything on his own without making sure it goes absolutely perfect first. When in reality, if he just patiently watched Cedric do his magic, then nothing would be going wrong. But Sophia refuses to give up hope. She suggests having Cedric prove his abilities in the magic show. And when things go wrong again, she stands as witness that it was Goodwin's fault, not Cedric's. By proving that the one and only time Goodwin didn't interrupt his son, Cedric was actually able to do the magic spell correctly. And at last, Cedric is finally able to prove himself and get his family wand. And perhaps something even more important than that. He finally gets recognition of his abilities from his own father. These events are key because they are an important element in breaking down the wall of lies that have been haunting Cedric all his life. But now his father has finally come to see that he can be a good sorcerer something he never would have thought possible before meeting Sophia. And that's not all Sophia does for Cedric. In the episode Winter's Gift, Sophia makes Cedric a gift herself to hold his family wand, but she hesitates because she isn't certain if it's good enough. One Tiana song later, though, and she realizes that what she gives him doesn't really have to be some big amazing present. The best gift she can give comes from her heart, a gift of love that shows she cares. And this ends up being the best and most thoughtful gift anyone has ever given him. I'll never lose my wand again. This is the best present I have ever gotten. Ever! And it is by this point that Cedric has truly made friends with Sophia, the first and only true friend he has ever had. But he still believes that he needs the amulet to prove to the rest of the world how great he really is. As much as he cares about Sophia, he just can't see her friendship as being good enough. I should also probably bring up exactly why Cedric wants to take the amulet. After all, what will it actually get him? Well, you see, the power of the amulet is to give someone a blessing if they do something good. Some sort of power, such as how Sophia gains the ability to talk to animals by helping a baby bird, or the ability to turn into a mermaid by helping free a trapped mermaid. Cedric hopes he can use these powers to his advantage. But there is a catch. The amulet doesn't just give you a power for doing good, but it can also take away that power, or worse, curse you if you do something bad. Such as in the episode, The Amulet and the Anthem, where Sophia brags about how special she is for being chosen to sing the anthem of Enchantia at an event. And in retaliation, the amulet makes her croak so that she can't sing unless she makes it up to her friends who she treated poorly. As you can probably guess, this is a problem for Cedric. Though he doesn't realize, because he hasn't considered taking over the kingdom to be a bad thing. He claims to be evil, but in reality, he doesn't actually know what being evil really is. And he almost always condemns the actually evil characters in the show. Showing 
showing that the way he actually sees it is that he was born to be evil, and taking over the kingdom is actually what he deserves and is the best outcome for everyone. Because to him, the rest of the world is wrong for seeing him as an idiot. However, he ends up getting the chance to see for himself exactly what getting the Amulet of Avalor would mean. Because you see, this show does the unthinkable, and in fact, Cedric does get the amulet. Sweeterichitis, sweeteroo! I, 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 I can't believe it. After all these years, the amulet of Avalor is mine. In the episode, Cedric Be Good, Cedric manages to pull off a spell to swap the real amulet of Avalor with a fake one. I was actually shaken to my bones when I first saw this, because seeing the villain actually get what they want almost never happens in any show, especially not the kind of show that most people would assume, wrongly might I add, that Sophia the First is. And just as one might have considered before this point, things don't quite work out how Cedric thinks they will. This of course being due to the amulet's powers only giving you strength if you do good things. But Cedric's low opinion of the rest of the world, which is understandable, constantly cause him to do bad things and get cursed instead. And so he spends the episode trying to gain new powers by doing good things, and also get rid of the curses whenever he does a bad thing as well. The karma aspect of the amulet is pretty much a perfect metaphor for Cedric as a character. He can never get what he wants because the power he desires doesn't work with his current goals. But being a good person is what will actually get him the power he wants. And the song A Better Me is a perfect example, as Cedric claims he wants to be a better version of himself, but every time he does something bad, he undoes his progress towards becoming a better version of himself, whereas doing good actually progresses him as a person. This episode is genius because it shows that Cedric is better at being good than bad. Since most of the time he loses his powers, he does so by accidentally being a menace, not actually intentionally doing evil things. And whenever he does something good, he is actually learning for himself what it actually means to be a good person person and just kindly do things for other people. Although he is only pretending to be good, that doesn't lessen his good deeds. Just like how not all good intentions lead to good deeds, it is also true that not all bad intentions lead to bad deeds. It actually reminds me a lot of the Doctor Who audio drama Jubilee, in which one of the main villains says that he is only pretending to be the villain, and so every bad thing he does doesn't count because it's all pretend. It is such hard work, Doctor, pretending to be as evil as everybody else. Every time I order an execution or send another dissident to the camps, I want to say, but this is not really me. I'm only pretending. But <sighs> you send them to the camps anyway. <sighs> Of course, in reality, this is messed up, and the Doctor calls him out and his entire twisted society as well. Maybe I made a mistake. Kill the Dalek if you like, or let the Dalek kill you. Oh, I don't think I can tell the two of you apart enough to care. But that's besides the point. The point is, even if Cedric is pretending to be good, he is still doing good things and learning what it means to be a good person along the way. Though it isn't the first time he ever does anything good, there are actually many examples throughout the show up to this point of Cedric being a hero and being good at being a hero. Firstly, he of course chose not to take Sophia's amulet after she helped him prove himself. He later actively helps Amber to repair James old kazoo zoo in Two Princesses and a Baby, and he did so for no personal gain. He doesn't actually get up to any evil schemes in the episode Prince for a Day, even though he doesn't want to help Prince James throughout the episode. He doesn't actually do anything wrong, and in fact, he's basically the hero who saves the day in the end by solving the problem of making a door to block the snoring giant. In the episode Bailey Whoops, he realized that trying to be the better sorcerer only causes more problems than working with his rival Greylock does. And in the episode The Curse of Princess Ivy, he helps Sophia and Amber to stop Princess Ivy even after they've already recovered Sophia's amulet, and thus his help has nothing to do with getting the amulet. And of course I can't forget to mention how he helps the students of Royal Prep defeat the dangerous Hexley Hall pranksters. All of these examples show just how great of a hero Cedric could be if he wanted to be, but he is so focused on what he thinks he wants that he fails to even consider the ramifications of these events. Well anyways, back to Cedric be good. In the end of this episode, Cedric believes that his desire for power and the amulet is not not a bad thing. Oh, the amulet cursed me again! But why? 
for trying to take over the kingdom, but that's not a bad thing. I deserve to be king. I do. <laughs> he genuinely believes that he deserves the power due to how terrible his life has been, like the universe owes him something. But that doesn't matter if how he gets that power is by taking it by force. It's still a bad thing to do, no matter what happened to him in the past. And of course, because he does this, the amulet curses him again. And in order to undo the curse, he is forced to give up the amulet back to Sophia. And that look on his face as he does so is a moment of realization for him, that his actions haven't gotten him anywhere and have only made things worse for the one and only person he cares about. He never realized how much taking Sophia's amulet would affect her until now. And when he returns it, it is more than just a way to get out of his situation, but a genuine act of kindness to the one person who has stood by his side through all their troubles. If it weren't for Sophia, he never would have been seen as a great sorcerer and complimented on many occasions by King Roland, nor would he have gotten his family wand from his father. And in fact, in the very same episode, Mystic Meadows that is, Cedric's mother calls Sophia not only Cedric's best friend, but his only friend. The primary thing this episode shows us is that the object he has long desired for this entire show up to this point cannot get him what he wants. You can't cheat your way to victory, to love and respect. Such things have to be earned, and now Cedric is left in a position of uncertainty. Everything he thought up to this point has been thrown into chaos. This episode is also crucial because it helps Cedric to overcome his obsession with the amulet and start to see past it, to what is really important in life. Yet another example of how this show puts plot progression over the status quo of a typical bad series. Another episode, which is a perfect example of how much better Cedric is as a hero, is Gone with the Wand, which might genuinely be the best name of any episode in this show. In this episode, Sophia proves her friendship to Cedric by doing something nice for him, that being taking him with her to see Merlin the wizard, his greatest hero. And he doesn't do anything villainous in this episode, showing that he doesn't actually have anything against Sophia, and taking her amulet is something that doesn't even come up at all in this episode. In fact, seeing his hero Merlin shows Cedric the possibilities of how much can be gained by being good instead of evil, as there is a great contrast between Merlin and Morgana. It's pretty telling that despite how much Cedric claims to be evil, he would never side with someone actually evil like Morgana. Because it isn't actually about being evil to him, it's about getting the respect he has been denied all his life. He has just believed all his life that he has to play the villain to get that respect. And speaking about the contrast between Cedric's views and true evil, that brings me to the episode Hexley Hall. This episode shows us that, while Cedric's desire for the amulet has decreased somewhat, still hoping he might be able to unlock the powers, but not nearly as determined due to previous events, Wormwood's desires for Cedric to get the amulet have not gone away. Though yeah, and I probably should mention Wormwood since I haven't really brought him up at this point, but he's kind of just Cedric's pet who's always scheming with him, but they can't actually talk because only Sophia can talk to animals. Well, until this episode anyways, where a potion accidentally spills on Cedric and Wormwood, giving them the ability to hear each other. But anyways, Wormwood has only ever wanted the amulet for Cedric's sake, but not because he actually believes in him, but because he wants Cedric to look good so that he can look good by extension. We learn in this episode that Wormwood, like Cedric, is the subject of mockery to the rest of the wizarding pet's world, and Wormwood has placed all the blame for his poor reputation on Cedric. Despite being Cedric's own pet, Wormwood is no better than all the other people who misjudged Cedric. Because to Wormwood, anything less than perfection is an embarrassment. And so even when Cedric is slowly starting to see things differently and value Sophia more than the amulet, Wormwood is still there pushing him in the opposite direction, to not change, because being friends with the princess will not get Cedric the power required to make Wormwood look good. This episode is also important for another reason as well, that being the villain of the episode, Grimtrix the Good. Cedric has always thought that people were born to be good or evil, seeing Grimtrix as this perfect person who only does good and has always been that way and always will be. But now, seeing Grimtrix turn out to be a villain completely shatters Cedric's worldview of people being born to be good or evil. This is important because it means that he doesn't necessarily have to be the villain. Because if Grimtrix is capable of doing evil, then he is capable of doing good. He just couldn't see any of his good deeds as such before because he had been blinded by the idea that everything he does is villainous, and being villainous is what is right and good to him. Tying back to how he couldn't see how taking Sophia's amulet was wrong because he thought that taking over the kingdom was meant to be. That was his destiny. And now we reach what is not only the most pivotal and most important part of Cedric's character arc, 
but what is also the best episode of the show, period. Day of the Sorcerers is an episode which presents a changed Cedric with the opportunity to gain every single desire he has long wished for all his life on a silver platter. But because he has changed and come to see that his friendship with Sophia is not as disposable as he once thought, he has to choose between what he thinks he wants and what he actually needs. The genius behind this plot lies in how the tables have turned. Past Cedric would have been overjoyed at the ability to so easily take over the kingdom, but now doing so is not easy for a completely different reason. The hardest thing to do now is to not take over the kingdom, and Cedric struggles with his lifelong torment by society and his newfound happiness with someone who actually cares for him. All this combines in what is not just the best song of this entire show, but one of the best songs I have ever heard, My Evil Dreams. When I was all alone, my evil schemes made me feel like I had a home. They did not need to go so hard on this song, but they did anyways. It holds so much weight to it, and it is sung to perfection. You can feel the anguish in Cedric, that even when he knows what he really wants, he is so used to falling back on what he thinks he wants, as doing so has quite literally been the thing that's kept him going. His dreams of power were there all his life, filling the void of what really matters. He didn't have people to steer him down the right path, because no one believed he was any good, and so his constant obsession with gaining this power was a coping mechanism to make him feel better about his life. These dreams genuinely filled the void of a true friend, until Sophia came. I love that Cedric's decision is motivated not by what he thinks is actually best, but out of fear of what might actually happen, because of the taunting emotional manipulation of someone who has pretended to be his friend just to get what he wants. I also love the visual of Cedric grabbing the taunting faces of the people who laugh at him and tossing them away with his magic. He tells himself nothing has changed about his dreams. My evil dream, nothing's changed, I know just what to do. Denying that Sophia has had an effect on what he believes is important, but really what he means, what he has tricked himself into believing, is that Sophia isn't good enough. The world at large hasn't changed how they see him, and until that happens, nothing has changed. We all make mistakes because we often think too emotionally and put our hopes and fears above logic and other people's feelings. And when the song ends, the music has such a dark, almost failure-esque, doom and gloom tone. And then at last, yes at last. Showing through the power of music, how Cedric making this choice is a devastating defeat and a denial of everything he has done and all the growth he has had as a person. It is in this moment that Sophia finally learns what Cedric has intended all this time. But Sophia doesn't accept his decision because, unlike him, she has been able to see all the good he did and that it wasn't all in service of taking the amulet. Some of it was out of the goodness of his heart that he can be a hero, and even though he pushes her away, she still doesn't give up on him. Cedric finally manages to all but completely take over the kingdom as he had long planned, freezing the royal family, all the guards, and staff with his now unbreakable spells. But Sophia appears to plead to him one last time, and in this moment, Cedric can't do it, pointing his weapon at his one and only friend, the one person who has stuck up for him through thick and thin. It is only now, when he has already betrayed her and her family, that he finally finally realizes that the kingdom isn't what he really wants or needs, as doing this hasn't made him feel more powerful or respected, but just even more empty inside. What he really needs is someone like Sophia to support him and show him the kindness he never had. He never lost the power that he had in the first place when he was a kid, it was his friends he lost. And all his life he tried to fill that void with more power, something he never needed, instead of trying to find someone who cared about him regardless of what everyone else thought. And now he sits in prison for his treachery, accepting his defeat. But Sophia refuses to let this be the end. Cedric doesn't see the point of anything anymore because the thing that broke him all those years ago was just one mistake. He had been taught by society that nothing you do matters if you make one big mistake. But now he has made two. He lost his reputation long ago because of one mistake, and now he has lost everything he had left because of another. Sophia, however, knows that, in reality, he's actually a good person who has been led by society to believe that he has to be the way he acted. But the worst thing you did? I know, I know, I tried to take over the kingdom. No, the worst thing you did was say we weren't friends. 
and she pleads for him to have another chance. He has never been given a true shot by reality to be the best version of himself. And so now, instead of his evil dreams driving him forward, it is Sophia, the one thing he always needed, a true friend, to fill that void in his heart. I guess sometimes the power of friendship really is the key to victory. And Cedric, of course, undoes his error and instead turns his wand against Grimtrix, a person who rejected good because he became too self-obsessed. Unlike Cedric, who never had that love for himself because the world took it away from him, but it is what ultimately allowed him to see himself for who he really is. A normal guy trying his best despite the world always trying to put him down. But Cedric's story doesn't end there, and honestly, I really like that it doesn't. It feels like so often writers don't know what to do with redeemed villains, and so they just kill them off or find some way to write them out of the story because writing the consequences of what happens next is possibly the hardest part. You see, in the episode In Cedric We Trust, we can clearly see that because of his past actions, Cedric has lost all the trust he once had with King Roland, and this episode shows that trust is something hard to get back once it has been lost. As soon as things go wrong, Roland is quick to blame Cedric. Even though Sophia sticks up for him, Roland just assumes she is naive. For Cedric, this stings particularly because he used to have Roland's trust, and it was only because of his inability to see what really mattered until recently that caused him to lose it. Now that he has chosen to give up his evil dreams and pursue friendship instead is the only time he now doesn't have the trust of the king. Ironic. Ironic. But Cedric is determined to not lose that trust once and for all. And that very same determination and endurance to never give up that his old teacher taught him, the thing that kept him going on trying to get the amulet, is exactly what he needs to win back Roland's trust. And in his song, I Am On Your Side, he shows just how dedicated he is to earning back this trust. I lend a million hands, I'll bridge the great divide, jump through a million hoops until you're satisfied. That I am on your side Yes, I am on your side Reminding Roland of how much good there is in being friends instead of enemies. Do you remember when We were like a team You had my back It was better than many dreams and speaking of enemies, this episode shows us the difference between Cedric and other people by making it clear that while he chose to live a better life, Wormwood chooses to stay a villain because he refuses to give up his false worldview of needing to prove he is great and important. And at last, we reach the finale of the entire series, a story which Cedric isn't a massive part of, but it does still feature one of the most important and satisfying moments of his entire arc. When Sophia is trapped inside the Amulet of Avalor by the villain, only Cedric can get her out with the help of everyone working together. And in this moment, it shows Cedric at his most powerful, a power gained not by stealing the amulet, but by proving to the world he is a good person, worthy of love and respect like everyone else. And when he succeeds, King Roland blesses upon him the title of Cedric the Great. From now on, you will be known as Cedric the Great. Thank you, Your Majesty. The very same title he thought that he needed to take over the kingdom to get. A title which he instead earns by making a true friend and seeing what is really important instead. Not power, but an unbreakable bond of love and trust. The true thing he has always needed all his life. Well, I suppose in conclusion, I think we can all agree that the most important takeaway from all this is that Wearing a purple outfit automatically makes you one of the greatest characters in fiction. No, oh, yeah, and something else about not treating others who make mistakes as lesser than you, and potentially lead to them getting depressed and thinking lesser of themselves and the world as a whole. But I'm sure none of that's important or anything. Dot, 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 dot. I see all of you trying to sneak away and close this video to watch something else. But just wait, I have a few things to say first. First of all, I would deeply like to know both what you think of this video and Cedric in general in the comments down below, and whether or not you'd actually like to see me cover Sophia the First in future videos, such as a ranking of all the episodes or all the songs in the show. Additionally, I also wanted to give a special mention to the Reddit community I am trying to build currently, since it doesn't have very many members yet. I think it would be great if more of you guys out there would join the community to discuss movies and TV and other things related to my channel. I'm also on a ton of other social media platforms, link in the description down below if you want to find those and follow me. And technically I also have a gaming YouTube channel that I sometimes upload videos to, you know, when I can actually find the time to edit them. And of course, I can't forget to shout out all my lovely patrons and channel members who help to support me in an extra way. Ed, Macabre Mole, Samir A, N7X Voss, 
Tyke, Gregory Bronstein, and Emperor Roku. Well, I suppose that's it. You can leave now. But don't just go to any normal video if you're going to leave this one. Make sure to check out my entire playlist of villain analyses if you're in a villainous mood. Or perhaps you're more in the friendship mood in which I did an entire video on the original Toy Story and how it perfected the tale of friendship. Either way, I'm sure one of these will be entertaining to some of you out there. But lastly, and most importantly of all, always remember to be iconic.